We've got one section left. This last section was fast. This section is even faster. Um, we're just about done. All right, so um, Comnivus 6, this is our inverter programming software. Uh, this is, I, I use this anytime I'm in the field. Uh, it's the first thing I do, I get on site. I plug my computer in to the drive. Uh, I look at uh, all the parameters. I save, the, save all the parameters. I create a list. I do a couple of scope traces. Um, so it, it is very useful, especially from a troubleshooting uh, standpoint. You really can see what's going on what's going on both uh, as far as speed is concerned, but also inputs and outputs as well. Um, so what can you do with it? You can make parameter adjustments. Uh, so rather than trying to make all the adjustments via the keypad, you can make them right on your computer. Uh, you can monitor real time several uh, different parameters if you're wondering where, where things are at. Real time, you can, you can see that. You can take uh, parameter uploads. So you've adjusted a car, you're happy with it, and you want to, to save the parameter list. You can take an upload and save it. You can also do parameter list downloads. So say you adjusted a car, you've got a, a car next door that you'd like to um, put the same parameters in. You can do that as well. And then the biggest advantage is going to be the scope function. Um, so the scope function is going to uh, allow you to, to scope any of the, the DG parameters a um, couple of the FB parameters. You can see what the motor speed, what the command speed is doing, what's coming over the field bus. You can see which inputs and outputs are, are active. Uh, the software is free. It's available to, to download off of our, our website. It is a large file, so it can take a while to download if you don't have a good internet connection. All right, connection. Um, we've got multiple ways to connect uh, to, to the inverter. Um, ultimately, it's Nice to have options, but it can cause a lot of confusion. Um, so I'm gonna, I've got a few recommendations on how I recommend to, to connect and what's easiest, but since we do have the cables, and a lot of people do have the cables, they've just never been able to make them uh, work, I will go over just real quick of, of what's what. Um, so to start out, we have a Comnivis cable here. Uh, it's an RS-232 cable, but it has a different pinout. So unfortunately, you can't go to Best Buy, buy an RS-232 cable, and use that. It has its own pinout. You cannot connect it to the control card. Um, so for example, on the R6, you can scope uh, parameters where you would uh, plug in right here. You can't plug in the Comnivis cable to, to this port here. What happens if you do? Uh, you can damage the control card or your computer. The RJ45 adapter, that's going to be this yellow guy here. Um, this is what's going to be used to connect to the older style keypad. We've got a USB to serial adapter. Um, that's what uh, would be used to convert your serial connection from your Comnivis cable to USB for, for your computer. Most computers now don't feature a serial port anymore. It's all USB. That's special thing. Yes, question? That's special. Uh, so the question is this special? Uh, yes, it is. It requires a special FDI chipset that you have to download. Do you have any samples that you have today? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do actually have some with me. I don't have any to give out. Um, can I look at it? Yes, but yes, you can, you can look at it. <laughs> right. And then lastly, we've got the, the, the KEV uh, USB serial converter. Um, it's going to do much the same that this does. However, it's going to simplify connecting a little bit. This can be connected directly to the control card, and you can connect to the R6. So the question was raised, you know, does, does noise affect the connection here? Uh, the answer is yes, it does. Um, you're going to have issues connecting. You might be able to connect, but you might drop your connection halfway through. You might be able to make parameter changes on the computer, but they don't make it to the drive. Um, so yes, noise can affect it. Um, if that is the case, I recommend using a ferrite ring to run, uh, to run through. Um, for the most part, I haven't seen too many issues with this guy, though. These are what I prefer. If, you're gonna, if you wish to connect, um, I'm going to provide you the most simple uh, way. Option one, if you're looking to connect to this keypad, this is how I would do it. Use the KEB 
serial converter, use the RJ45 adapter. This goes on here. Not pictured here is a black cable with a USB end that would plug into your computer. When you order this, it includes that black cable, so don't worry, you can hook it up to your computer. The other option, again, I'm just providing this to you since the cables are available. You can use the Comniviz cable plugged into the serial converter. Disadvantage here, if you're using serial speed control with your controller, this port's going to be used, so you can't use it. So if you use this, this can always be used. This is always going to be available, so that's why I prefer this. So if you wish to connect to the new style keypad, all you need is this serial converter. That's it. You're going to make the connection right here on X6D. If you're using serial speed control with the controller, that's going to be connected on X6C, so we have that extra diagnostic port available. Uh, works well. It's just that one piece. That's it. Again, I will provide you with the option. You can use the serial converter and the Comniviz, or the serial adapter and the Comniviz cable, if you wish. Uh, if you're looking to connect directly to the control card on the R6, that's going to be right here. All right, so getting connected, um, you've got the right cables. Now you want to uh, download the, the software to your computer. You can just go to our website and uh, uh, follow the, uh, the link for um, software. It's available for 7, 8, and 10 versions of Windows. Um, I, I do believe it, it works on the, the, the ta Microsoft tablets as, as well, as long as they're running uh, some form of Windows software. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just follow the, the installation instructions. It should walk you through it. The only thing that you're going to have to talk to, to me about or somebody at, at KEB is going to be about the configuration IDs. Unfortunately, we don't uh, host the configuration IDs on, on our website, so you will have to talk to me. All it is is an XML file that you will put in this folder. Um, what this does is it allows you to actually see the, the parameters themselves. If you don't have this XML file, you won't be able to see the, the parameters. All right, so real quickly, just getting connected, how you're going to do it. You're just going to open up a, a new project here. You're going to do a KEB device scan. What this is going to do is scan all of the COM ports in your computer, and it's going to look for a KEB device. Uh, when it finds the device, it's going to pop up here. You'll highlight it and click Add Selected Device. Once you get connected, uh, on the left-hand side will be the navigator. You'll have a little green symbol here. That means that your connection is, has been established. Everything's good. It'll be labeled uh, as Node 1, and it will indicate which device you have. So here we've got an F5. If you had an R6, it'll say R6. And then in the middle of the screen here, is going to be where all your parameters are. So here, the operator parameters. Uh, operator parameters are going to refer to the ones that are in the keypad. Those are going to be the ones that we adjusted uh, via the keypad. You do have the device parameters. Those are what, what are called the drive parameters, sometimes called the background parameters. Um, those are the parameters that are on the control card. So what, what the parameter structure looks like, so we got all the groups here. If you wish to see all the parameter numbers, you can hit the little plus box next to the group. It'll bring down everybody that's in that group. Um, ones that you cannot change are going to be in gray. Ones that you can change are going to be in blue. If you wish to change one, just double click. Box will come up. You can enter in your value. Hit OK. All right, you want to uh, create a, a parameter upload list. You want to save the parameters. What you do there, go to Tools. You go down to Parameter Backup. A box will appear. You'll click Start. It will ask you if you would like to still proceed with the download even though there are some write only uh, or write always uh, parameters. These are parameters that you can't change. So for example, the DG parameters, uh, just click yes, that's fine. And then when you're all done, um, it's going to ask you if you'd like to save it or attach it to the project. Uh, you can do either. I recommend attaching to the project if you are going to do scope traces, uh, take more uploads or multiple sco scope traces. If you're just looking to save the list, you can just save the file, that's fine. All right, so say you've got a, a parameter list that you've saved from a car. You want to take those parameters, put it into a, a different drive. You can do that. Uh, that'll be just done in project. 
you'll go down to Add Object, and you'll select the Import Parameter File uh, from a folder. So wherever you saved it in your computer, just select it there. The list will appear. However, that means just because the list appeared doesn't mean that the parameters are on the drive yet. You need to download the, the parameters from the list to the drive. That's done with this little green arrow here. All right, making a scope. It's going to be done with this window here. You just click on it. It'll ask you to name it. You'll click OK. You'll start adding uh, channels. Uh, if you're using ComedyViz, uh, the parameters that we, we want you to scope are going to be the DG parameters, uh, the diagnostics. Uh, those, are, those are the ones that you can scope. Occasionally, you may have to scope the FB if you're using serial speed control. You're wondering which raw value is, is coming in. Uh, but for the most part, all the parameters of interest would be the DG. So you'll just select what you would like to scope. Um, so you can do motor current, motor speed. It's going to ask you how you would like to scale them. My recommendation for scaling is uh, whatever your top speed is. So for example, you want to scope motor speed. And your top speed is going to be 100 RPM. Make 100 RPM 100%. Uh, that, that works well for, for scaling. If you don't want to do that, we do have an auto scale function as well. You can just right click and hit auto scale. Once you've got all the um, channels of interest uh, selected and scaled properly, you can start the scope. The scope will run. You can run your elevator. And uh, it'll see real time what, uh, what's actually happening. And then when you're all done, you'll hit the, the stop bump button. That's going to be this guy here. And uh, so this is just a, a speed pattern. This is something that you would see. What you can do is add in cursors. These cursors you can move. It'll actually tell you what the real value is at that point in time. And then if you've got two cursors, it'll actually tell you the difference between the two. So if you're looking at you know, how long uh, were you going a certain speed, how long was your current ramp down, does that correspond to what I have set in the drive, that's where that difference can be used. Uh, here's an example of a, of a ride quality. Um, we did the command and the actual speed, and then we also did uh, motor torque and current. For the most part, if you're looking at ride quality, those are the four parameters of interest. Uh, motor speed, command speed, motor torque, motor current. Uh, what you can also use the scope for, though, is scoping your inputs and your outputs. Um, so for this particular uh, scope here, uh, we had some questions on the DRO uh, when it was becoming, um, when it was going low at the end of the run, when it wasn't active. So as you can see here, I'm looking at the inputs. So right here is where we dropped our direction. So we go down to here. LT10, that brake drop delay timer started right here. We go down here. Our LT12, current hold timer start, starts. You can see in the blue, that's motor current. So you can see we've got that nice holding current. And then if we continue to go down here, LT13, that's the current ramp down time. Got that set to two seconds. Here you can see that ramp. So here we've got that nice ramp um, where we're transferring the, the torque load from the, from the drive or from the motor holding the torque to the brake. So again, that's just an example of, of how you can use this for other than um, speed control. All right, and that concludes the presentation. I just want to say thank you for attending today. I appreciate it. If you've got any questions for me, my name is Tyler. Uh, feel free to talk to me after. Give me a phone call. Um, use me as a resource. Thank you.